There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Watley, the chairman of the RNC. Well done, sir. Well done. What a great night for America. What a great night for the world. Um, absolutely huge. Um, you know, and, and, and just, you know, we're, we're already seeing, you know, the impacts of this election. Uh, yesterday, we set an all-time record high on the stock market. And this morning, we're reading about Hamas calling for an end to the war in uh, Gaza. Um, you know, that, that Donald Trump uh, presented this country with an amazing, clear vision um, and, and how he's going to make America strong again. And even, you know, 24 hours after the election, we're already seeing movement. It's, it's really okay. awesome for the country. So I was talking to someone the other day, and I said, do you trust the RNC to be on top of election integrity issues? And they said, no. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he said, he said well, I, I, I don't know. Like, they haven't done, you know what I mean? Like, we'll see. Um, and I just want to say that I was so encouraged early on election day, maybe, maybe the day before, uh, there were like a couple, now there's election day, there were a couple problems like in Pennsylvania. And you guys were on it, like so fast. Lawyers deployed, like, I don't know if you like dropped them out of a helicopter or what, but they were there. And then some of them went to court and the courts ruled and every, like, it was like solved fast, incredibly impressive. Are there any stories that we don't know about of you guys being on it? You know, there are a lot of stories. Um, uh, you know, we, we dealt with literally hundreds of issues uh, all across the country. Um, and, and a lot of them were, you know, uh, they seemed minor at the time. But look, you know, in, Pen in Philadelphia, for example, all of our poll observers that, that we recruited and trained, 230,000 of them around the country, 15,000 of them in, in Pennsylvania. So all of our poll workers show up, uh, you know, when the, when the polls open, um, and they wouldn't let them in. And, you know, we're like, well, we're, we're the registered poll workers. They said, that's great. You're not getting in. Um, we were, what? we were in front of those officials with lawyers and going to court within 15 minutes and within 30 minutes, our people were in the room. Um, you know, and, <laughs> and, and that's, that to me is being very aggressive, forward leaning. You know, we had one, uh, you know, uh, county, that said, well, we're not going to count throughout the night. We're going to hold all our ballots and count them tomorrow. That violates state law. We went in and said, okay, well, here's the pleadings. We're going to court in 15 minutes. And they said, well, hold on a minute. We'll, we'll go ahead and count them tonight. Um, you know, Where and, was this? Where was that? Uh, that, was, that was in Pennsylvania as well. Um, but we had, you know, Jeez. just a myriad of, of things in Arizona, in Nevada, you know, um, in, in other states. And, you know, I really do think that um, – you know, the word we used internally was, you know, prophylactic. What you want to do is, is be there and demonstrate to these guys you're going to be there, and then they'll back off and they won't cheat. Um, and, right. and we saw just literally hundreds of examples uh, all across. I was talking with, with Laura Trump this morning, who, you know, has just been absolutely amazing as the co-chair um, about, you know, how big this effort was. We recruited 6,500 attorneys around the country. Um, you know, we had hundreds of firms on retainer. Uh, we have, you know, 115 attorneys in house, um, and everybody, it was all hands on deck. I can't, I can't thank the overall team enough. Um, just because you know, just all you have to do is look at the results and, and say, yeah, these guys made a decision, uh, to go forward with it. You know, I think. No, you got, you guys were on it. Yeah. Um, now let's, now some of it's not done yet. Um, we, we did some good news, bad news earlier, and there's plenty of good news, and I want to ask you for some more to wrap up, but um, they're still counting in Pennsylvania. Yep. The bad news is Michigan and Wisconsin just couldn't have been closer, but went for the Democrats, the two Senate races. What a bummer. But we're still counting in Nevada and Arizona, and I think people are concerned about, you know, that. What, what can you tell us about Nevada and Arizona? Uh, look, the votes are going to end up where the votes are uh, just because of how people cast their ballots. Um, but we have lawyers in the room. We are very aggressive on it. We are monitoring those counts, um, and, and we're going to continue to be forward. Um, you know, and we're looking at states right now. We're already having conversations of if there's going to be a recount, say, in Pennsylvania, or there's going to be a recount in Nevada or Arizona. Um, we're already pre-staging our teams to make sure that they're on the ground, uh, and we're going to get out there. Um, I am extremely proud of the race that, that Sam Brown and, and Carrie Lake uh, ran, um, you know, both of them, you know, to be where they are right now. And, and, you know, these, these, 
you know, thousands of vote differential uh, states just, you know, really, really good. And, and, you know, when you think about Bernie Moreno and you think about Sheehy and you think about Dave McCormick, just, you know, that is going to make a tremendous impact uh, in terms of President Trump being able to get his agenda through Congress. Um, And, you know, thank God we we were in a position with really, really great candidates uh, to win, despite the fact that the Democrats you know, we're, we're dropping hundreds of millions of dollars in every one of those states. Now, the, the ramifications are massive, and we've gone over it. The difference between 2020 versus now, and, and Clarence Thomas can retire in peace, uh, knowing that there's a potential 53 Republican majority in the Senate at a Trump presidency. Then Trump can nominate one, two, maybe, depending on Sotomayor's health, uh, maybe three in the next four years. Um, okay, now, I, I don't want to keep celebrating, Mr. Wiley. It's all good. Uh, and I don't know when you're going to start thinking about 2026 and 2028. Uh, but the goal here, I think every single election since, uh, for, I don't know, since whenever, uh, the, the party in charge of the presidency at the midterm election loses House seats. And in, 20, in four years, Trump won't be on the ballot. And that's a very different thing. So when do you guys, when do you guys start wor- thinking about that? Uh, I started thinking about it at five o'clock this morning when I sat down and pulled <laughs> out the map of the 26 Senate races. Um, and, you know, really kind of started mapping out, uh, that we've got, you know, well, pick up opportunities at? in Georgia. We've got to pick up opportunity in Michigan, you know, uh, Maine, we're going to have to see what Susan Collins wants to do. Um, you know, and overall mm-hmm. on the house side, um, you know, we're still going to be in an extremely small, uh, minority, uh, majority. And, uh, you know, so we've got to, to, to work very hard to, to pick up, um, you know, those house seats and that's going to take a, a Herculean effort, but, uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're in a position right now, uh, where we have the trifecta, we've got the house, the Senate and the president, we need to capitalize on that opportunity for America. Um, yes. I think in 2016, uh, the Republicans were, were fighting themselves. They were not, doing what they needed to do to advance the president's agenda the way they should have, that is not going to happen this time. We have America no. first Senate. We have an America first house. Um, and, and we are going to push very aggressively uh, to get the president's nominees through and then to make sure that we're moving, uh, you know, the, the various uh, tax packages and, and other legislative vehicles that have to move. Okay. Uh, we, so we haven't officially won the House yet. The New York Times gives us a 95% chance, though, to knock out these last few races that haven't yet been decided. Uh, we talked to Brestahan earlier, who won the Scranton race. Uh, won, won Scranton, Pennsylvania, and flipped that seat, which was, was pretty awesome, a great win there. What is, what's to you, like, give me a number or a fact that blows you away the most. Um, I'll give you a negative one, for instance, is CNN said, at least on election night, that Kamala did not move a single county to the left by three points or more out of the 4,600 counties in America, I believe the number is, uh, did not move a single one to the left three points or more. Um, so that's a, that's a crushing blow for her. What's a big win that you saw from Republicans? I, I think the fact that we saw seismic shifts in uh, black support for President Trump, Hispanic support for President Trump, and Asian American support for President Trump, uh, it, it really shows you that uh, that his efforts to go into places like Philadelphia, Detroit, Atlanta, the Bronx, um, and and go on platforms that that really were not traditional mainstream media, um, really paid off. You know, the fact that he talked to every American voter uh, really, I think, shows you why. And the fact that that, that we won uh, the popular vote, um, I think that probably is the single biggest accomplishment of the night. Uh, the fact that, that Donald J. Trump not only won all seven battleground states, but carried the, the popular vote. Yeah, without even trying. Like, that's not a, that's not a thing. So they didn't try to win the popular vote. Uh, you know, no one campaigned in California to win votes, really, for Trump, right? So um, without, to not even try to win it <laughs> and still win it is pretty good. All right, Mr. Wiley, what are you doing to celebrate? I know you got back to work at 5 a.m., but there had to be something. Like my wife and I last night, we treated ourselves to a little, some burrata, some burrata cheese. That's like, we went out, we bought some burrata cheese. All right. That was our celebration for, for a job. Well, that you did, you did more than I did. So what's your celebration? You know what? Uh, the opportunity to be with president Trump Tuesday night, uh, with his family, 
uh, you know, with the team that, 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 that worked so hard over the last several years to get him done, uh, to be on stage and, and really enjoy that moment with him uh, when they, they called the race. That, that is a moment I'll never forget. Yeah. Was it relief? Or what? What was the feeling? Uh, to be honest with you, as we were going through the night, impatience was probably the, the, the most accurate word to describe me because I knew uh, that, that we were winning in, in Michigan and Pennsylvania and, and uh, Georgia. I was just waiting for the press to call it. Um, and and yeah. you wanted, you know, to, to make sure uh, that everything was done, um, you know, and, and, and really, truly, when they called it, you're like, okay, this is great. I mean, it's just, you know, it is really... a a huge opportunity to move this country forward. And I know, you know, the president cares so much about this country uh, and, and to have to watch it it decline and, and, and crash the way that it did uh, over the course of the last four years, it hurt him. It hurt me. uh, It hurt all of us. And uh, you know, so now we're, we're anxious. I mean, you know, we've got a lot of work to do before January 20th, but I know we can't wait to get in. And, uh, and and get him in and the administration rolling and start making real change for the country. My dad always told me the Rodney Dangerfield joke um, where my dad one day gave me one of these, the AOK sign. You get, you get one of these, Mr. Watley, a big, b- bigger than a thumbs up. You get a big AOK. Uh, job well done, sir. Look forward to the next go around. I really appreciate it. And uh, look, we, we couldn't do this without your listeners. I mean, we wouldn't be where we are without your listeners. The number of doors that they knocked on, the calls that they made, the five-minute conversations that they had, uh, the fact that they all got out there and voted. Um, you know, this is, this is a national effort. Um, and, and the fact that you and your listeners played a huge role, we, we are very grateful for it. Let's do it again. Yes, sir. Mr. Wiley, he's the chair of the RNC. Where, are, people, do you, are you want to send anyone anywhere, or should we all just celebrate on our own for now? We'll all get together in uh, Washington, D.C. on January 20th. That's it. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Talk soon.